petrol ped you did buy the wrong GTS. Hello and welcome back to the channel and once again welcome to Eurotunnel, the start of many a YouTube adventure. Today's video is my first overseas road trip in the Porsche Boxster GTS this year. We took the car over the Alps twice last year, had a really good time and we want to make it an even better time today. So we've got four amazing days of driving where we should end up hopefully in Venice in Italy. Before we get there we're going to stay overnight in Germany tonight. Tomorrow we're going to be in Stuttgart and we're going to visit the Porsche Museum. So if you've never been there check that out. Then the day after that we've got to go down to Zellamde in Austria. Not a very long drive so we can really savour the roads and we're going to drive up a very famous panorama road that I've been wanting to drive for a very very long time. And then our final day heading to Venice will see us take the famous Grossglockner Pass over the Alps. A pass that was only actually designed for tourism and as a result it's really really stunning. So let's get on the Euro Tunnel and get this box with a road trip on the road. We've made it to our first overnight stop which is in a village called Beersdorf which I like to think means beer village because it's just down the road from the famous Bitburger brewery. I'll just show you the stats on today's trip. So we have done, hopefully you can see that, we've done 753 kilometres so just under 500 miles, eight and a half hours driving and 31.7 miles to the gallon which I don't think is too bad, bearing in mind we've either been going pretty much flat out or stuck in traffic and there was quite a lot of traffic but we made it here at five past seven, we've checked in. Let me just show you the hotel because it's quite an interesting place and it's not expensive. I think it's about 115 euros if you book directly with the hotel. First impressions are that it's a little bit 
dated and possibly run down, but bear with me. Firstly, come over here. It's overlooking a lake. Every room has a view of this lake, which is really restful. It's in the Eiffel Mountains, so not very far from the Nürburgring. And let me now show you the room, which is down here. And that's the uh, terrace for dinner. So we're gonna sit out there and have a look at the lake while we eat, which is heaven. It's about 20, 22 degrees. There's not a breath of wind. Okay, this is our room, number seven. Nothing special. I think it was the cheaper of the two room options. And uh, it's um, not the most modern room, but they've made an effort. The flooring is great, the seats are great. It's really, really clean. There's a coffee machine over there, a fridge, a bottle of water, some biscuits, chocolate, some sweets on the pillows. It looks very restful, perfect overnight stop. And then you have the view. And I'm embarrassed to say I did sort of hoon it up this hairpin road to get here, probably to the um, enjoyment or otherwise of all the people eating their dinner up there. So it sounded better than that diesel Renault from Holland. So yeah, guys, that's day one. Tomorrow, it's an exciting day and not a particularly stressful day because it's not very far to Stuttgart. So we're going to go to the Porsche Museum and then the adventure really begins after that. Welcome to day two of this 2023 Porsche Adventure destination, Venice. We had a great night at um, Panorama Hotel Berghof in the village of Beersdorf am See. It's a beautiful place, very, very quiet, but it is kind of dominated by the fact there's a really empty hotel there that's massive. Um, it's not a problem for us. The hotel we were in was brilliant and we had a great night. What did you think of that hotel? Because it's not the kind of hotel we normally book. Yeah, the boss was there. Really nice people. Him and his wife, I think, served us every time, whether it was paying to leave, checking in, the food, the breakfast. So it's a really tight ship. And the food was really good, and we slept well, didn't we? And we had a lovely view, and it was really quiet, really yeah. quiet. So I'd definitely try and come here again, I think. It's a really good stopover because we did it in a day quite easily from the Midlands. And then from here onwards, you're kind of at the start of the German motorway network, so you can go anywhere, Swiss Alps, Austrian Alps, German Alps, Italy. It's a great place to start off and if you like driving. The roads are pretty good too. So our destination today is the Porsche Museum in Stuttgart. It's actually quite an easy day, it's probably about four hours driving, which is half what we normally do, and that's another beauty of staying here in that it's kind of saved us driving today. So yeah, I'm looking forward to today's driving. We've got the roof down to make the most of it before we hit the outer barn. So I'll see you somewhere en route to Stuttgart. First fuel stop out of the UK. And it's interesting to note, we've got not one or two unleaded, we've got three. So we've got an E5, normal unleaded. They call it Super over here. Super E10, which is the new one with, I think, bioethanol in it and we've got Super Plus, which is our super unleaded price-wise. Well, it's probably not the cheapest one in the world here. It's 192 Super Plus, which is about £1.70, so not cheap. Okay, we're about an hour in and we're on the A62 Autobahn. It's a two-laner, it's pretty quiet though. Uh, it's a bit twisty, so it's not really a flat-out kind of motorway but we're cruising at a steady sort of 100 miles an hour and it's just weird seeing ways that go all red and annoyed when you go over the speed limit and that's because on this bit of motorway there is no speed limit. The flat out runs are all well and good but it's just this freedom to travel at a really decent speed, 100 miles an hour, let's face it, on the ground is a really good speed for quite a long time and you do make really, really good progress. This probably isn't the best car for it because it's a sports car, it's not the most refined motorway car, although the 7th gear 
does keep the revs down, which is good. I'm not completely trusting of it at like 140 miles an hour around these corners just because I've never done that before. And yes, we've got the spoiler sticking up to keep the back down, but I don't want to find out its limits at 140 miles an hour on an autobahn. So 100 miles an hour is just fine. I think you agree with that, don't you, darling? Yes, it's, um, yeah, I don't go any faster. <laughs> Okay, first stop of the day, apart from a fuel stop earlier, is the Technic Museum in Speyer. There's Technology Museum in the town of Speyer. There's another one nearby in Sinsheim, which has got more cars, but this is famous for having a 747 just like suspended in the air. And I'm a big fan of the 747. We haven't really got the time to kill here and do it justice because we need to get to the Porsche Museum in Stuttgart, but it's literally on the way. So as you can see, they've got all these planes here and there, in the distance, is the 747, just like suspended. It's a great sight, isn't it? We came around the corner off the motorway and it was just like there. The yeah, it's, it's a real shot when you see that um, on the way in. Hello, Porsche, nice red leather. And I've, I love 747s and I've come here to see the one they've got. And uh, the first thing you see when you come off the road around the corner is this 747. Looking like it's in mid-flight, it's uh, yeah. well worth a visit if you're in the Spire area. Down here we have a Mark 1 GTI from Burago. That's really nice actually, 1979. Uh, the Nardo W12, which they never made and never will make anything like that. What's that? It's a Mark IV? Cool. Ooh. Oh man. Oh, Mark 6. If only that was a Mark 5. Okay, so we're heading for our final destination of the day, which is the Porsche Museum in Zuffenhausen to the northwest of Stuttgart. We're staying down the road, we'll probably walk it from there. I'm going to go to the Porsche Museum first, though. And this is the autobahn, the reality of it. We're doing 50 miles an hour now, and it's going to take us an hour to do the 60 miles to the Porsche Museum. But hey, it could be a lot worse. If you're into sort of German cars and stuff, it's really good around here because the Hockenheim Ring is over here and the, we're going to drive straight past the Audi factory at Neckersum where they make the RS models, most of the RS models these days, and the Audi R8. Um, but we haven't got time to stop there because down the road is the Porsche Museum, so I'll see you when we get there. We made it to Zuffenhausen. I think this is a Porsche factory right in front of us now. And there's some thing in the middle of a roundabout that looks pretty swish, yeah, with Porsche on it, which I think was from Goodwood's Festival of Speed. Which is turned right now for the museum. It's a modern bit of architecture, so it does stand out quite a lot. If I remember rightly, we just make a right in here. We haven't had lunch yet though, so Kate's snapping away. Here we are, with the steering wheel on the wrong side. Only four museum visitors, yada da da da. Use the left lane to turn left. You've arrived. Destination is on your right. Well, first stop for us here at the Porsche Museum isn't the cars, it's the food. And that's because we haven't eaten for about five hours. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. It's ravenous. Hangry. She gets very hangry. So we've got some meatballs and we've got some potato salad. There is a cafe just through those doors that's great, but it's really busy. It's quite literally a bun fight. So we've gone to the Box and Stop restaurant there. That means you can sit out here. And I can't think of a better place to have some food. We've got classic Porsches here. We have got 
the body shop there with its famous bridge into the main works. We've got the statue, the work of art thing from Goodwood House in 2014, which I'm pretty sure was for the 50th anniversary of the 9-11, because, um, was it 2013? Because that is the 9-9-1, which would have been new at the time. Right, this is a, an unusual site. So we've got a 997.2 GT3, just driving down the front here, outside the museum. Got a couple of people who are from the museum, maybe technicians guiding it along the frontage. It's got a roll cage as well, so super cool car. It's great to see the museum, except it's moved. It's going to be parking out the front. Brilliant. This um, lunch spot got even, even better. Okay, we're just going up to the museum now. I won't bore you by talking you around it. I'll just film the best bits and put them to some music and I hope you really enjoy it. And you should come, by the way. It's much better to see the cars in the metal than seeing them on a video. Ooh, that is a weird place to start. I guess that's where the car started. This is a really, really good museum. You can tell it's a good museum because you don't have to be into cars to enjoy it. Kate's not really into cars, are you, darling? No. But you're enjoying it here, aren't you? It's a nice, yeah. nice place to come. It's a really good museum and they've organised it really well. Yeah, in the very German way. But uh, it's hard to rethink, really, that this all came from the Beetle originally. That's what started it all off. And there's, there's so much heritage here. I think they've probably got the best heritage of any brand. I mean, they're only 75 years old, which is pretty young compared to a lot of car makers. Um, but wow, what have they done in that 75 years? If you haven't already got a Porsche, when you come here, you will almost definitely want one. And I think that, that just shows how successful this, this museum is. Oh look, it's good old Walter over there. Wow. That silver one, yeah. the 911, uh, it's first turbo actually, yes. And they had to make them compete with the modern contemporary like Lamborghinis and Ferraris. Yeah. And so 
they've made them wider and mm. lower and mm. it's worked really well and I think it could have gone quite wrong at that point but they've managed to pull it off. Yeah, so they're trying to keep the heritage look, which is tricky with a modern car, an ultra modern car in the case of that 911 and it, and it actually works, yeah. That's surprising really because that profile goes back, what is it, well it's um, 50, must be like 60 years now. So yeah, there are flasher cars, there are faster cars, but I'm not sure there are actually any better cars. Now, since I last came here about 10 years ago, social media has become even bigger and Porsche catering for that because you can have your photo taken in two cars. One of them is this Crayon 911 Target 4S. The other one is this um, red Boxster. 718 GTS. I thought it'd be really funny to get in the car that I've actually got, so let's get in it. Okay, it's a little bit newer, and blimey, it's been kicked to hell. It's worse than Kate's side of my car. So this is a 718 GTS 2.5 bend. It's very similar in here. Um, but yeah, when you start it up, it sounds quite different. And petrol ped, you did buy the wrong GTS. As well as looking at Porsches in the museum, you can actually drive a Porsche if you come here. You can rent a Porsche, buy a Porsche, drive, as these guys are doing. They're just picking up these 911 convertibles and it's 30 degrees, it's a Friday afternoon. I'm sure they're gonna have a really, really cool weekend. I'm not sure how expensive it is. It's not gonna be cheap. I know the deposit is two and a half thousand euros, um, but yeah, where can you go from Stuttgart in the day? Pretty much anywhere in Europe. So put the sun cream on because you're going to need it guys and have have a really great time so yeah check it out porsche drive i must come back and do it myself sometime i can't really believe it but this looks like a porsche drive car as well going by the number plate you can't even buy one of these very easily and yet you can hire one here from stuttgart and because they're so rare you park it up outside the porsche museum and loads of people take photos of it so yeah, this is going to be one seriously expensive rental, but imagine. Well guys, we're now driving on a public road between the bits of the factory. There's a bridge there that joins the two. I'm not sure if these are workers' cars. It's a bit late on a Friday, but they're a popular brand selling lots of cars, so maybe they do work late. And uh, yeah, it's definitely quite the building. I think we've got to go left here to our hotel. Yep, amazingly I remembered that. Yeah, it's not like Wolfsburg though, where every car is a Volkswagen. Here, actually, on the roads, Porsches are quite rare. I think, how many have we seen, apart from coming out of the museum? About two. So yeah, look, Mercedes, Vauxhall, trucks, loads and loads of trucks. Um, Ford, Fiat, everything but Porsche. In fact, there's not even, weirdly, that many Volkswagens. Well, I won't pretend we're not flagging a bit now, but we had to eat and we got the tube into Stuttgart and we both had Greek food and it's a Greek kind of evening here. So we've gone to a Greek restaurant called um, Greek Cuisine. But yeah, we've got a mixture of things here. And uh, yeah, what do you think? Uh, I really like these. Yeah, vine leaf stuff. That's like a mixture of things. Very traditional Greek salad with the feta in the slabs, which is how it should be. A roasted feta and these croquettes have got feta in as well. So yeah, a lot of feta. Let's get, yeah, jajiki. Mm. Stuttgart by and large is pretty forgettable. Unfortunately, it looks like we bombed the crap out of it and the architecture is, is yeah. Um, well, not particularly classical. There is an old town somewhere, but there is this Porsche boutique, which I've never seen before. Don't like the sign up. Got a big Fush wheel there. That Ruby Stone GT3 RS. That's cool. Uh, 
I guess it's just like an extension of the museum really. A couple of cars in there and some merch. There's a little bar as well. Classic adverts on the telly. We've got a friend parked next to us from Slovakia. This is the highest tavern in Germany that you can drive to. It's also the highest tavern cows can walk to. We've just seen our first sign for Venice. We should lift our spirits.